futures trading is risky and can result in substantial financial loss. Never put a futures position on without a stop loss order in place. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Short Term Trading Live with Oscar. We're going to talk about some trades for 3.30.07 or at least week ending. We're going to do the Friday Roundup. If you guys were with me, whoa, were we lucky this week so far? I mean, we've been catching this S&P day after day after day. I know you guys were with me because the emails have been going nuts lately. You guys have been in the forum telling me about it. A lot of us are starting to get in and out together. And like we said when we started this endeavor, we're going to make this a crowd. A crowd of analysts, a crowd of traders who know what they're doing, who know how to play these markets. And so far, so good. So stick with me. Yesterday, well actually today, but I usually do my Friday roundups on Saturday, but it is Friday, so we're going to talk about the trades from today. We are sold. The ESM7, the e the S&P, we sold it at 14.34 and a half. Market tank down to 14.20, down actually to 14.18. We had a support level at 14.17 of the quarter. It immediately shot up. I flash updated everybody. We were out for 14, between 14.24 and a half and 26 and a half. Nice trade. We did it the day before. We did it the day before that. We called direction every day this week. So far, so good. Go Omni. The NASDAQ, we short, we short the NASDAQ at 17.93. We took those back at 17.77 and a half. Another nice trade. Thank you, Omni. So far, so good. Hopefully, Omni will carry us into next week. You never know with those things, though. Hey, guys, when the losing starts, you know, I know you're going to throw tomatoes. You're going to shoot at me. I'm going to get the evil emails. But I'm going to stand here every day and trade through it. Hopefully, you guys will still love me when we get to that. But let's see how that works. A um, couple of things. I was crazy enough to stand in front of the camera on the 28th, the night of the 28th. We were trading, I guess, around between 14.30 and 14.40 and said, you heard it here first. I pulled one of those crazy things. We're going to 14.12. Hey, just about happened. We only got to 14.18, but we were trading around 14.40, 14.35 when I gave you that wreck. So again, go Omni. This Omni's doing great for us. Um, let's talk about a couple of things that, you know, I always come back to this every Friday roundup of your emotions. Keep your emotions in check. You have to keep your emotions in check when you're trading in this game. You know, I've called them shark-infested waters before, and they really are. There are guys out there that are watching on the screens to see if you're placing stop levels in the most obvious spots, and not that there's any conspiracy, because, you know, I don't believe, I don't subscribe to conspiracy theories, but there are guys out there, and I can see it when it was sometimes at night, especially late at night. They will see where you put your stops, and they will push the market down and find out if you get nervous. And that's where your emotions get involved. And they push it a little lower and you start thinking about now I'm losing, I'm down 300, I'm down 350. Then they push, they push it off a little bit lower and they get it closer to your sell stop. And you get nervous and your emotions get involved. And let me tell you, I know this happens. I've been trading for years and the f at least the first half of my career, emotions got the better of me and took all kinds of winning trades and threw them out the window on me. Because you get into a nice winner and, you know, so you look at it and you say, this is the big one, I'm going to make all the money in the world on it, and you don't get out when you should, and then the market starts, so that's the first emotion, the, the elation gets involved, if you're on the winning side, then the market starts coming against you and you think, well, I had 350, I don't want to just take 250, let me try to do break even. And you know, you know what I'm talking about traders, if you're professional, if you're studying professional traders, you've done this before. Your emotions start to get the better of you. You start to, you know, you look at those screens as they pulsate, and you see the ticks, and you start thinking, and I know you move your stops, and I know you move your exit levels, and that you have to learn to keep in check. It is so important to not do that. And that brings us to the second thing. It's something I told you about a few times this week. That's sticking to your guns. And by that I mean, if you have a trading plan, if you did your analysis, let's say it's a Wednesday evening, the kids are asleep, there's nothing going on at the moment, um, the markets are closed, so you don't have that static going on, you don't have that nervous energy, even if they're open, they're the evening markets, maybe you trade them, maybe you don't, but you know the feeling I'm talking about, when you get to do your analysis and things are quiet. So you come up with a plan. Your plan is, I'm going to buy any commodity at 1410, let's call it S&P, I'm going to buy S&P at 1410. I'm going to put my sell stop at 14.05, and when it gets to 14.20, I'm going to take a profit. So now you have a plan. The next day, 
markets open and you're supposed to place your orders, place your entry order, place your stop first of course, then place your entry order and then you hope for your target and you get out of your target level. Well what happens when the markets open? The first thing you do is you start wondering should I even place the buy order to get myself in? Then you wonder is the stop in the right level? And that's your emotions getting involved. And if you change your stop, or you change your exit or entry level, you've now broken away from your plan, you're no longer sticking to your guns, and you're not using the strategy that you've worked so hard on the evening before, when I said, like I said, when markets are closed and things are quiet. Now markets are open and the news is on, you see the news flashing, you got your screen on, the tick is going, you're watching the ticky or the trend or whatever it is that turns you on while you're trading and you start getting emotional and if you change your trading plan you've broken away from sticking to your guns and you know we talk about this often and for you guys that have followed me I have been rock solid I stand there like a rock you've seen these markets whip up towards my stop but you've never once gotten an email from me that said ooh let's panic and jump out never once in all the videos I've stood in front of you and spoke to you about. So my emotions do not get involved in my trading and I always, always stick to my plan at all times. You need to do that. I've gotten a lot of emails about emotions all week long. That's why I thought I would, I would, you know, sort of bring it to light in this video and I'll say it a couple of more times. Keep your emotions in check. If you do not stick to your plan, those shocks I, I am telling you about will get you nervous, and once you're on the, on the defensive, you will lose your money. So no matter what, keep your powder dry, keep your emotions in check, and stick to your trading plan. Stick to your guns. It is so important. And of course, place stops first at all times. Always trade with a stop. If you trade with stops, I guarantee you that no matter what the disaster is that takes place, unless the electronic market as a whole goes down, you will get knocked out of the market when that disaster happens, and you will be on the outside being glad you're out instead of on the inside wishing you were out, because that happens to a lot of people. And I would much prefer to be out of a market wishing I was in than in a market wishing I was out. And the stop will get you out so that you don't have to pray to whatever it is you believe in once you get into a position that you can't get out of. So be careful about that. Remember, stick to your plan, keep your emotions out, always place your stops. And when I tell you to place them first, for you traders that are new to my videos and maybe you don't understand why I say place stops first, quick scenario. Again, let's say you're going to buy S&P at 1410 and you're going to sell it at 1405 stop. Now the reason why we place stops, of course, is if a disaster takes place, the stop is in to get you out. Because if you're anything like me, when you come up with a trade, the only way your stop gets hit is if you were wrong on direction for the day and it's going the opposite way and you're just wrong. If your stop gets hit and it goes back in that direction, you likely use too small of a stop or put it right in the target zone of those shocks that I tell you about. So, um, I think that, well, maybe we should take this a different way, Mike. Maybe I should... Well, let me go back to that for a minute. So if you place your buy stop, if you place your sell stop first, you know, I think I'm almost thinking I want to illustrate this on the board, but let's see if I can get this out this way. If you place your sell stop first before you ever place your buy order, so market's trading 1420, you want to buy at 1410, put a sell stop in at 1405. So you walk up to your machine and you type sell one at 1405 on a stop, enter. It goes in. Then as you type buy one at 1410, on the, if you buy one at 1410, the market starts to come down. And before you get a chance to even buy one, the market comes soaring down, hits your sell stop, and gets you short the market. The only order that you have in at the moment is your sell stop. If a disaster takes place, the only position that you can get into is a short, which is the right direction. Take that to a, let's take that scenario back for a moment. If you place your buy order first, buy one at 1410. Now you're going to place your sell stop at 1405, and as you hit the order, you hit the S key for sell one, the market drops, hits your buy at 1410, and just continues down in the spiral. You are now long the market, you've never placed your stop, and you can't get out, because you didn't place your stop first. So if you placed it first, not only would you be in, you'd be in and profiting on a trade that you should have never even had on, but because your disaster plan worked, you ended up making money. So a disaster plan, if you place your stops first, will either stop the loss or actually make money for you in most cases. 
So that's why I say place your stops first. They can either help you or stop harming you. Stop, they, they can stop the bleeding, so to speak. Place your stops. Place them first. I know this makes sense. I've done it myself. I've learned that lesson the hard way. Place your stops first. Place them always. Um, now I think we're going to take this to some charts. I have some charts I'd like to talk to you about. I mentioned the mirror image. I've seen a few mirror images now pop up on the yen chart. And I'd like to show that to you. And then maybe we'll take a look at stochastics too. I'll do a quick lesson on that. So we're going to pop to the board. I'll put up some charts and we'll go from there. Okay, we've, I've shown you the mirror image formation before. Um, the mirror image formation generally is one bar with an open and a close. The open, let's say, is on the high or near the high, drops, closes by the low. Then the next day it opens, rallies, and closes by the high, almost the same size bar, almost exact opposites and closes. That is two parts of a three-part formation I like to call the mirror image. I don't think you'll find it in books. I've kind of, I've never really seen it elsewhere. It's something uh, I've kind of coined a long, long time ago. Maybe you can find it in the book. Maybe someone else said it to me and it's subliminal. I don't know, but I've never heard it elsewhere. So it's my mirror image formation. Um, so anyway, you have the two bars. And then the rule is, if on day three, a market, the market opens and rallies up into the middle section of the two previous bars, Whatever way it goes after that, after that generally is a trade for at least two days. So in other words, if you have the two bars and the next day a market opens, goes into the middle and drops, that means you can be short for a good two days. It's a good, quick two-day sell signal. Uh, for short-term trading, you can day trade it from the short side for two days if it breaks out to the downside. Now, conversely, you have another one right here, another mirror image where you have a, a market that opens, drops, and closes. The next day it opens, rallies, and closes in almost the same size bars. The market rallies up, you can get long, boom, you profited that day. The next day it opened up, moved much higher, then actually had a reversal, but with short-term traders, so you got the long out of that. It just wasn't two days, it was more like a day and a half. So let's go back now. I found one here. A day, market opens, drops, closes. Next day, market opens, rallies, closes. The third day, the market dips into the middle of the range or somewhere near it and rallies up. Boom. Nice up move, nice up move. Mirror image works. Mirror image number two. Market opens, drops, closes. Next day, market opens, rallies, closes. Well, actually, it's the opposite. It opens, drops, closes in the middle. Next day, it opens, drops, closes about the same. Almost the same size bars. The third day, we opened, dropped down a little, and then, boom, massive run down. So another good day to take a short from the mirror image formation. Then I find another. It's the first one I showed you. We have two bars, almost equal distance. Open and close is opposite. The market rallies out. You can buy it. The next day, you still had a long in it. As long as you didn't hold it overnight, you did all, you did all right with it. Well, here we are. Friday, the third leg of a mirror image. I love it for the Japanese yen coming in Sunday night into Monday. You have, it's not exact. It's like the one I showed you in gold a couple of days ago. But what you have is a bar, another bar with opposite opens and closes, and the third bar has traveled up into it and came down lower. That tells me that we have a drop coming. So now we at least have a projection, or at least a prediction, for where Japanese Yen will go based on the mirror image formation. You see it works. One, two, three. This is the only time it wasn't great, but one, two, three. Here's our number four. That's all on one chart on the Yen. I challenge you guys to bring up a couple of charts daily, open, high, low, close bars, and show me what, what you've found. Send me some emails on that. I will certainly look at what you found and compare it to what my notes and see if you did, in fact, find mirror image formations for yourself on your own. It's an interesting thing. I'd love to see your results. So you traders out there and you analysts, send me your results. We'll check it out. I'll look at it for you, and uh, hopefully you're learning from me. And show me that you've learned by showing me my own formations. So that's one. We're going to take a look at stochastics. A simple, slow stochastic. Percent K is 3, percent D is 5, nothing tricky about it, no shifts, no anything. Just go with a raw, simple 3, 5, percent KD, slow stochastic. And take a look at, I happened to just pull up right before the video, the daily May corn chart, looked at the stochastic and said, well, I might as well show that because I was looking for a stochastic to show you. As the first one that came up, it worked just fine. So here we go. 
Nothing in this business, as you know, as you've heard me say many times, is 100%. This is not an exact science. So you can't find exact formations or exact signals, but close enough is close enough for comfort in this business. So let's look at it. We had a crossover. We got be, uh, somewhere below 30, which looks to me below 30 and 35 stochastic scale. Market seems to have turnaround buys. And when you get above 80, as you would in most overbought conditions on stochastics, you get a turnaround sell. And if you look, the crossover day when the percent K and the percent D crossed over was the first day of a rally phase. The market rallied, rallied. Then stochastics came to overbought. They crossed over. Boom, look at that drop right there. We're day traders. Who cares where it goes the next day? That is a definite signal. Away we go. Okay? So then you stay, you stay on the seller of rally side looking for the stochastics to finish their move, they get to the bottom, look at that, on the day of the crossover, boom, day one, rally, rally, rally. Hey, another nice signal. I'm not even going to give prices or dates because I want you to keep it simple. Find charts, look for the simple stochastic, look for the move, and do what I'm doing. This is, believe it or not, simple, um, simple stochastics and should be used in a simple way, and you know I like to keep it simple and simple, 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 and that's the way to go. Keep your analysis simple. So here it is again. You get a crossover. The market goes into oversold turf. The percent day crosses over. The percent D crosses over with the percent K, and you start your rally. Boom, 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 boom. Then you reach a high. You get a crossover. You come off. You start your descend. Here's where you could get tripped up. Although there isn't a great example here, but a lot of times if you are going to trend like a runaway like this right here. Bloop, 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 bloop. You cannot take the signals. You have to be, that's where your experience has to come in. You have to know a defined trend and know when stochastics get pinned. When stochastics get pinned, the last thing you want to do is mess with the stochastics. Then I just look away and I don't even bother looking at them again until they finally do something like this and then I'll take another look at it. So through this whole phase, when stochastics are pinned, turn the page, find another indicator, don't use them. Here's a tip from Oscar. It took me years to figure that one out. You can't take any signals up here once they get pinned in a position where a market's rallying. They become useless. When they're swinging, take the trades. When they're not, walk away from them. And of course, never put on a trade just because stochastics tell you. You have to look at all the indicators and make sure that they jive. Um, I think that's the simplest way I can explain it. I don't want to get too complicated with it. Maybe in a few, down, a few weeks, a few months down the road as lessons continue, I can show you other ways to apply them. They're very interesting. If you guys want to know about any of the things I do, um, that's certainly one of them that I look at, but by no means is that the only thing that would make me decide to trade a market. It is a lagging indicator, not a leading indicator, so you need to be careful. But I find it's not so much of a laggard if you know how to read it. You can actually see where it should be going next. Now... There's been lots and lots and lots and lots of talk about my Omni. I'm hearing about it from everybody that I know. So, I think, I've thought about this for a long, long time. I get emails constantly. Oscar, what's your Omni? Can you show us your Omni? Would you please explain it to us? We can't really, we like your trades. We see that they're accurate, but we can't really trade without knowing how you derive your numbers. I've been keeping this Omni a secret, and I feel bad. You guys know me. I speak from the heart. I don't know if I can keep it secret any longer. If you guys are watching, you may get a chance here to see my Omni. I'm going to break it out on film. You guys will get to see it. Now, you guys that have subscribed with me, the first thing you need to do, if you've gotten our kit, you know, whenever you fill out for you, whenever you fill out a subscription, we send you that welcome kit. Well... Don't forget, you've got to put on your 3D glasses, because the only way to see my Omni is if you've got your glasses on. So break out your kits and take out your 3D glasses, and I'll show you how to read my Omni. Now I'm going to bring it into the camera here. Now this is really, you know guys, I've been working on this my entire life. This is my life, my life's ambition, my lifelong work, my achievement. I finally learned how to trade. But the only way you can really, really see what's in my Omni as if you put on your glasses, well, here it is. You got your glasses on, ladies and gentlemen? I got mine. You got your glasses on, Mike? It's going to hurt your eyes when it comes out. Here's the Omni, ladies and gentlemen.
Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided. That being said, I am a 24-year seasoned trader on and off the floors. This is how I've made my living for many, many years. Good luck trading.